Welcome, 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 everybody, to the CG Cookie live stream, uh, the Blender edition. And um, if you're just now getting here, uh, you've missed a lively pre-stream chat that's up to like eight pages long. Um, so we've discussed various topics like, uh, let's see, what did we start out with? Uh, oh, left click versus right click select in Blender, whether that should be default or not. Omar believes it should. Um, left click should be default. We've also discussed drawing and painting, whether we still do those as part of our artistic endeavors. And then lately, the hot topic has been, um, I better refresh just to make sure the stream is even going. Um, wow. Okay, let's try that again. So I got started without actually setting the stream to live. Um, yikes. All right, let's start over then. Um, make sure you guys know it's live. Whoops. All right. Um, okay. Yeah, welcome everybody uh, to the CG Cookie live stream, Blender edition. And um, if you're just now getting here, you've missed a fairly lively pre-stream chat where uh, we discussed various topics like uh, right, -click left, uh, right click select versus left click select in Blender, whether that should be default. Bel uh, Omar believes it should be, left click select should be default. And uh, we also discussed painting and drawing, if we still do those, or if we do those alongside our 3D art. Um, and then the hot topic seems to be uh, cold and snow, whether or not those are good things. So, um, but yeah, that's what we've been talking about up till this point. Eight pages of pre-stream chat is pretty uh, awesome. I love I love the concept that this community is lively. You guys know each other. There are jokes being thrown around. Um, that's awesome. It's it's uh, yeah, it's fairly new to me. I'm, I'm glad to see that building up inside the class. Um, yeah, so the class. Uh, welcome to BC two eighteen oh three, which is a class about creating stylized characters with Blender. Um, in case you haven't put together that string of numbers and letters, it's Blender class number two, uh, and it's the year 2018, third month of March. That's what that stands for. Um, so we're talking about stylized characters, and that is an important thing to me for a couple reasons. Um, but I also think it's kind of important to human nature, human creativity. If you think back to, I mean, ancient cultures like... Uh, Let's uh, get into my presentation, the um, like hier uh, Egyptian hieroglyphics. If you think about those and how distinctly recognizable they are in terms of style, um, they're obviously not like, photographic etches in, in stone. They, um, you know, all the feet pointed the same way, the hands being like the, the fingers all being the same length and, and always like right beside each other, um, aligned. Uh, the heads always turned in profile. These things are stylistic choices. And I'm, I'm going out on a limb here, but if they could build the pyramids, I have a feeling they could have etched fairly photorealistic um, art into the walls. But I would say they chose not to. This is how they wanted to be presented throughout time. And, um, and it's a style. And so as far back as that, you know, uh, stylization has been important to, to human nature. Same thing with uh, Asian cultures and that, that watercolor style with, with harsh uh, black lines, round faces, um, things like that. And, and also Greek culture, uh, Greek statues. That one's pretty close to being realistic, but I would argue that the anatomy, the musculature is too symmetrical. It's too perfect. And same with the beard. Uh, it's not symmetrical, but all the, those curls are supremely uh, alike one another. And um, I would say that they are conveying through their sculpture, not a photorealism, but a, um, a, a, a an aesthetic, a visual style of, of probably perfection that they wanted to convey. Anyway, all that to say, stylization is deeply ingrained in human nature. So I think it's a very important topic to be discussed and to be analyzed and studied and practiced. And especially for the, um, the digital artists like us, um, stylization is a common aspiration for digital artists. And here we've got three pieces of art from the CG Cookie Gallery. Um, Vinny by Lucas Facal, I believe that's how you pronounce your last name. Um, really talented artist. I mean, this Vinny character is super cool. You should go find that in the Staff Picks uh, Gallery. And um, 
all these are from there. The Ultra character by uh, Ricardo Bancone and the Green Haired Girl. All of these are supreme examples of stylized characters created with Blender and um, what is possible with, with stylization. Um, and also I wanted to mention that um, beyond just wanting to do it out of personal aspiration, there's a professional demand for stylization. If you think about every Disney movie that's ever been made, um, oh, okay, that, let's take that back. Every Disney animation that's ever been made, all those are stylized characters, especially the 3D ones um, in our context, like Frozen and Tangled, all of these are um, in high demand for this type of artist with these, with these particular types of skills. Um, children's cartoons, uh, video games are often very stylized. So there's a high professional demand for stylization. Um, and I mean, I'd say at least as much, if not more so than, mm, I don't know, it's at least comparable to like visual effects for realism stuff. So it's certainly something worth getting good at if you wanna uh, make it a profession. I personally did professional stylized work for a studio called Real Effects for about three years and um, all of it was was stylized. None of it was realistic. And um, so yeah, it, it's it's certainly a worthwhile thing to understand. And even if you don't wanna focus on it 100%, if realism is more what you like, it's good to have that in your back pocket, at least from a professional standpoint. Um, and it's fun, it's fun. Like what, you, what, you, what I want to express through um, stylization is actually, is that it's more of an expression arguably than realism. Um, you have, it, within stylization, you have more opportunity to create something unique. And um, um, yeah, so that's that's kind of what the course is about. Fo we're gonna focus on stylization and uh, hopefully have a lot of fun with it. I'm excited to see what characters come out of this from you guys. And I'm gonna be doing one myself. So I'm excited to just build another character myself. So um, a couple things before we get into the meat and potatoes of the course, of, of this, um, well, of the, uh, the the today's live stream um, is some some housekeeping, and I wanted to go over understanding the the class format because at the moment um, it's still a bit of an experiment. This whole class thing we've called it in beta, and uh, um, the the reason it's in beta is we don't have an official class system on the website. It's uh, we're just using pieces that are already there, like the community thread and the live events. Um, and pre-existing content, pre-recorded content, we're using these things to create the class format. Um, but it, it just means there's some kinks along the way and maybe it's not uh, it's not obviously understandable. So I wanted to go over that um, and some key points. Uh, uh, most importantly, that the homepage of the class is the community thread. So if we jump over to uh, the, the website in the community, I've pinned this um, community thread at the top, BC2-1803. It'll always be up at the top until the class is over. And this is the central hub of everything that's happening in the class. I thought I clicked that link. Um, yeah, so in the description of the thread, this is the syllabus for the class. Uh, hopefully you've already seen this. You've, you've looked it over and decided that you wanna do this class based on the syllabus, but um, this is where you can have an idea for what's gonna happen each week, um, what the goals are gonna be, the homework assignments. And if, we, if I can be a little specific about the homework assignments, um, so they're listed at the bottom of each section, you know, week one at the bottom homework. So there's two assignments technically. This week you're gonna sculpt a caricature bust. And um, in, in the brackets is like some, some brief details about how you're gonna do that. You're gonna post a screenshot or a render or a Sketchfab embed into this community thread. All submissions, homework submissions will be um, submissions to the community thread. It's uh, it's not ideal, but that means it's just gonna be a big linear um, conversation of, uh, throughout this class. And, and I'm gonna be checking in every day, so I'm gonna keep a tight pulse on it. Um, again, it's not ideal, but uh, it works. It worked uh, with the first class. So that's what we're working with at the moment. But yeah. Um, so any homework submission is a post here. Any question here is if you if you need a question, the best place to post is here. Um, uh, anything regarding the class, and so that is where you want to check. Um, primarily is the community thread. Aside from that, we're we're uh, on the live event page. Um, we've got all of our assigned uh, our our live streams for the event for the sorry our live events for the month are all scheduled. Please uh, RSVP to them if you plan on being there. And um, let's go over a couple other things. So we went over that the class syllabus is in the thread description. Uh, okay, so class announcements. 
this is kind of tacked on to the community thread at the top. What I plan to do is edit the description with, um, with uh, segmented class announcements, just in case there's anything important that I want you guys to know. And uh, my internet's chugging a little bit, I think due to streaming and, and then watching the stream uh, simultaneously. But um, let me just make sure I'm not... Okay, I had the stream going in a few places. All right, um, hopefully the internet's a little faster now. So, um, okay, back to the class announcements right here up at the top. I made one yesterday because it was officially the beginning of the class on March 5th and it just you know said it started and be sure to be here for the live event, that kind of thing. Um, I, I usually have an announcement each week, but check here. And also I'm going to make an actual post um, with, with that copied information. Um, I think it's on page three actually. And anytime you see this particular format, let's see, where is it? Right here. So it's just, you know, these, these flashing red lights and big bold text. This is, a, this is the announcement, but um, since I've been adding it as, a as an alteration to the description, you don't get any notifications. And so I'm gonna post that here so you sort of get a notification. And um, yeah, so class announcements, be aware of that. Um, live events take place each Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time um, of the United States. Um, and if you can't make it, I understand that it's, we realized very quickly when we started doing streams how um, one time works for certain people and it is absolutely horrible for other people. And it's just always a moving target. So 2 p.m. is, we landed on kind of what works best for us. And um, if you can't make it, that's understandable. We, I will post the recordings of the stream within 24 hours after broadcast. So you'll still be able to uh, have access to that that content, but unfortunately, you know, maybe not um, live interaction if you can't be there. But um, I understand it's just it's just part of it. So homework, the schedule homework is due on the Sunday of each week. That's kind of how I envision it. You know, you have Saturday and Sunday um, at the end of the week to do for a push to do the the work and get and get your homework done. Um, and so I thought that made sense to end to submit your homework by the end of the day Sunday. And then when we, when we get started on Monday, I sign in and I expect all the homework to be there and we can start the, the week fresh. So uh, yeah, the Sundays of each week, please submit your homework. And again, homework is submitted by posting to the community thread. Um, and, and finally, you know, use that community thread to ask your questions. Uh, it, it's, we, it's a safe place for that. Please do. I'm going to be checking on that daily and hopefully we'll have some, some users also doing that. Um, awesome. Okay. So I, I feel like that took a long time to cover, but, uh, yeah, the, I felt like I need to do that because the class format is a little bit Frankenstein together. Um, and there's usually questions about it. So hopefully that makes more sense. Um, we won't have to do that again, hopefully, but just to get the class kicked off. And then a couple other items. I'm curious what experience level levels are in here. Um, I, I framed the class as being intermediate to beginner in orientation, but had some people ask if, it, if it, you know, as a beginner, can they do it? And, and yes, they definitely, you're welcome. Everybody's welcome. Um, if, uh, please say in the chat also, by the way, if, so I can get an actual idea. Do we have beginners? Um, just say, yeah, I'm a beginner. Or do we have some advanced people, um, mostly advanced, mostly intermediate? I'm just curious to get a pulse. But, uh, and post maybe how long you've been using Blender. If it's, I would say a beginner is, is like a year and under, and then between a year and three years is intermediate, three and above, I would say is advanced, just to give a, 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 um, a, a some sort of metric. But um, anyway, uh, you guys are absolutely welcome. Everybody's welcome. I just wanna make sure that we understand that the curriculum does assume at least an intermediate uh, experience level. So it's best if you already know the essentials of Blender, of 3D modeling and of sculpting. Um, that's just gonna, you know, we can't, you can't really teach the in-depth nature of this stuff to a complete beginner. Um, if you are a beginner, I would request that you kind of do some of the legwork yourself, look at our beginner content, do that in addition to, to the assigned courses. And, um, oh wow, getting all kinds of, getting all kinds of uh, responses. This is awesome. Okay, so still a beginner, intermediate beginner, advanced. Um, Wow, that's great. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna have to read through this. This is awesome. Just want to soak up some knowledge. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. If you if you just want to be here to watch and like 
yeah, soak up knowledge. You're absolutely welcome to. Um, I guess I, what I, if there's a point to, to saying this, it's like if you're an absolute beginner, it's going to be hard to answer a lot of beginner questions. So if it's just going to detract from the actual focus. So if you're a complete beginner, please try and do some of, of the uh, getting familiar with Blender on your own with, with our other content and, uh, and then peek in at this content as well. That's maybe my point. But um, let's see, next slide. Okay, some ground rules. In, in understanding that there are gonna be beginners here, let's keep in all, all uh, experience levels, let's please keep this a welcoming place. Um, one that's safe for questions and one that's, that people wanna come to, that they aren't afraid to, to speak their mind or, or open or you know, ask questions. Uh, also a safe place to post work. It's a pretty brave thing to post your work on the internet, especially in a work in progress format. Um, so let's make sure that, that that's okay and we're not gonna put any bad critiques up there like I don't like this or, or this does not look good and end it with that. Those are not good critiques. Uh, if there's any question about what is a good critique, check our blog. We did an article about this. Just search for feedback. Let's see, where was it? Um, can you give valuable feedback? So this article, we kind of address this um, just, you know, trying to put forth the idea that, that, uh, don't give bad feedback. People are posting their work, respect that and give thoughtful cr critique, if none at all. Um, if not, then none at all. So yeah, just keep that in mind. We want it to be a safe place. We want people to, uh, feel good about posting their work here and we're all learning at the same time. Um, another point, push yourself, um, do your best, but don't come here to flex. Uh, I've just, I've seen sometimes, uh, people enter uh, in, into a space where they, they kind of know all this stuff already and they, and they just, I don't know, it's a little bit of an ego stroking, you know, so don't do that. It's all about posture, like come here and do your best. And if you are better than, than everyone else here, like that's awesome. Just, you know, don't treat it as flexing. I think that's going to be obvious, you know, to people. So let's not do that. And finally, for the advanced people, um, be a resource. Please be a resource to people. It happened in the first class where we had a lot of advanced people and they stuck around. They didn't just bail like, okay, this is for beginners. It's not for me. They stuck around and they answered a ton of questions. They had awesome attitudes about it. So please do that if you're an advanced user here. Hopefully you'll be learning stuff too, um, but um, please be a resource. Stick around to be a resource for others. That said, um, I've never actually had to deal with with any of these issues from this community. I just figured it was say, it was good to go ahead and lay those ground rules, but you guys already do a great job of that. And next, finally, uh, the last thing I wanna do is discuss volunteer assistance because as um, Zolt pointed out, we had 124 RSVPs to this live event. And historically that means um, maybe like 50% will actually show up and participate. But still, if we have 50 to 100 plus participants, I'm gonna need some help from, from some people. Uh, things like answering questions in the community thread, a general presence um, there as well, because you know, I'm not gonna be sitting at the computer 24 seven, you know, like waiting, waiting to respond to people. Um, but, but if we can, you know, if I have, especially my work hours, like I'm gonna be on there frequently, but um, at night, if, if, you know, like if my nighttime is someone else's daytime, like that's, that's a good way we can cover the bases in terms of time, time. Um, so anyway, uh, also grading homework, um, and documenting those homework grades. I want to point out Zolt again, because in the first class I did not have that base covered and we got a bunch of homework submissions and I was like excited about that number one, but also like, oh my goodness, I'm not going to be able to keep track of this. And he, I believe, I believe you're a, a, a male. Um, but you, you made a spreadsheet on your own, you shared it with me, and you documented the page of the community thread that it was on, the um, uh, content of the homework, the name, all the information, you took that upon yourself. It was a huge help. And so this class, I want to officially put out a call, sort of a, a standby call, um, that if you think you can do this and you want to volunteer and, and help me out in this way, uh, please email me at kent at cgcookie.com. I want to get a lay of the land, see how many people we have participating. And if it is a lot, if we get a bunch of homework submissions, then I'm going to be emailing you guys back and trying to set up a Skype call so that we can, 
you know, have uh, discuss some details about how to teamwork this thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, it'll probably just be one or two people, but if you're interested in that, please do email me with the subject. I volunteer as tribute, so I know exactly uh, why you're uh, contacting me. All right, that was 20 minutes of, of housekeeping, essentially. Um, so now let's get to the meat and potatoes of what is essentially gonna be a lecture from me about stylization. What is character style or stylization? Let me make sure before we get into that if I've missed any questions in the chat. Um, Let's see, Kent, are you ZBrushing or go being into Blender and reworking the sculpt aspect? Um, I'm, it's gonna be strictly Blender um, this time. Let me just make sure that, okay, yeah. It's gonna be all Blender. I haven't, I haven't done go B or ZBrushed in probably years. So it's strictly Blender. Um, um, not that anything's wrong with ZBrush. Let's see. I don't think I missed any other questions people saying how long they've been using Blender. Thank you for posting that, by the way. Um, wow, yeah, I'm excited to look through that. Hunger Games reference A+, glad glad you got that. Um, awesome, okay, I don't see any questions, so we'll go right into the lecture. And again, what is character style or stylization? Uh, the way I define that is any visually aesthetic deviation from reality. And I think the best illustration is a caricature. So here we've got a photograph of two people, and also the hyper-stylized caricature that someone drew for them. I assume it was at like a carnival or state fair. I think Disney World and, and like entertainment parks, amusement parks do this kind of thing a lot, where they just focus on the key features of the face, of, of each person's face, and exaggerate it to the extreme. The idea being you get a pretty funny but recognizable um, image at the end of it, drawing. And so this is a perfect example of what stylization is in, in a sense. And, and I think, um, especially for me, if I, I come from realism, like this clicks for me exactly to the definition of what stylization is. But we also have a variety of stylization. Here we've got a much more realistic 3D sculpture, but it's just pushed away from reality enough that it is a style, like shapes are exaggerated, the nose is a bit much, the depth of the creases in some situations, um, some of the proportions, it's just slightly pushed away from reality. And if you've played that game Dishonored 2, you should you know, know the feeling that I'm talking about. Um, but this, this is, um, you know, it's close to reality, but still just barely stylized. And then we also have what is, you know, maybe stereotypically referred to as a cartoony aesthetic with, extremely simplified shapes um, that do represent anatomy, but at like the simplest form. And uh, we see, you know, children's cartoons, uh, Disney uh, films or animated films or, or DreamWorks kind of have this style depending on the project. And so we have a spectrum and that's important to understand because however small the deviation or however big, it makes for a very wide spectrum. There's a lot of potential for creativity within this spectrum compare it to like realism, it either looks real or it doesn't. Um, so that's a, you know, that's a certain set of chains, if you will, um, or limitations to the creativity within photorealism. Um, but with stylization, it opens up a lot of doors for more expressive characters to be created. Um, just checking at the chat. Yeah, okay. You like how the simplified, the third one is. Um, Excellent. Well, we're going to get into that more. Uh, so let's, let, I want to, just saying it's a spectrum maybe doesn't help, you know, that much for a more like organized mind to understand this. So I wanted to separate it into three categories. And the first one being barely stylized or low level deviation from reality. And this is, um, if we look at the first character, I think this is actually a physical sculpt, but um, like the, the coloration and the skin quality, the hair, the reflection in the eye, like this looks hyper-realistic, but the proportions of the face are clearly stylized. And that combination makes for a very interesting aesthetic, um, but it is a style, you know, it's not realistic. It's not perfectly realistic. It, it kind of makes you do a double take. And um, so it's a very unique style. I did similar thing with this. This is a personal artwork I did um, several years ago with the same kind of thing. Like the geometry is stylized and exaggerated. Um, the neck is too thin, the ears are huge and have like sharp 
sharp edges to them. Um, this, this sharp line around the head is way too sharp, way more sharp than an actual skeleton. But the, I was going for very realistic lighting and, and shading and, um, you know, all for the sake of this particular aesthetic. Whereas on this uh, far right image, it's, it's different. It's kind of reversed. It's the geometry is very, uh, realistic, I would say like realistically proportioned but the surface is, is pretty smooth and simplified. We don't see poor detail or a lot of wrinkles. It's been kind of smoothed out. The color itself is, is you know, basic colors. There's not a lot of detail in the color. And so that creates another aesthetic, um, almost, I don't know, kind of comic booky, action figure-y. I don't know, it's, it's just not photorealistic, obviously. And so, um, yeah, these are all examples of barely stylized, as I call it, barely stylized, a, a small deviation from reality. Uh, Kyle, you're mentioning in the chat, I love how it says so much about the artist um, and the subject by what they choose to exaggerate. Absolutely, that you're getting at what, what I hope you would in that these, the stylization is such an expression of the artist and it's, it makes it fun and it, it just connects us sometimes a little bit more to that artist compared to I mean, really, I'm just comparing it to realism. That's kind of the other direction you can go. Um, let's see, no other questions. All right, we'll go on to the next one, which is mid-level deviation from reality, or I couldn't come up with a good name, just stylized. You know, if we've got barely stylized, this is in the middle, it's just stylized. And uh, this one, if we start at the left, I, I think the mid-level has the most potential for appeal. It's a further deviation from reality than the barely stylized. You know, like the posture of this character is extreme. The, the beak-like nose is, is very elongated. The proportions are exaggerated. Also, he's looking down his nose in like a more extreme way than a real human would. And, um, you know, small feet, big hands, all these things play into a very appealing kind of character. I love this character. And, uh, and... Yeah, so this is a good example. It's further from reality, but it's not. it could be pushed further. Um, in the middle, we have maybe a common like Disney character aesthetic, and I've used Disney a lot, but like this is maybe because they are representative of like a lot of animation in the, in the animation world. Um, but like, you know, th this is the character that you kind of see in kids TV shows in, um, in general animation, and it's extremely appealing. Um, but it, it is fairly common. Um, that I, this one I think has good character because like the hair is, is messy and her, like the tilt of her head kind of gives her a spunkiness about her. And so there's definitely character, but you know, when you've seen this so much for me, at least they can start to run together and it's maybe hard to create terribly unique things with this particular style, but it is very appealing. That cannot be denied. And then finally on the right, um, it still matches the criteria of being further um, separated from reality or further exaggeration of reality, but there's a, a very harsh um, aesthetic to the, to the details in the Wolverine character. We've got the, the arms look more like a rocky formation than like organic musculature. The, uh, the, the clothing has these really sharp kind of gouges. It looks like, you know, knife, a knife was used to cut the wrinkles, obviously soft, fabric or you know is never this sharp in appearance and certainly no amount of starch in fabric is going to make this so all of this uh the, the the hair being kind of spiked back and almost like prickly looking it all gives this edginess this edgy aesthetic to the wolverine character and and that's cool and that that is a style like that is an intentional choice and um and i find that appealing i, I would say we don't see many cartoons like this so still in the middle, this is more appealing, I would say, to the masses. But yeah, that's mid-level um, mid level stylization. And then finally, we have very stylized or extreme deviation from reality. And here, if we start from the left, again, we've got that hyper-realistic, well, it's not hyper-realistic, but very realistic skin shading, texturing, and lighting. But the proportions are absurd. They're like caricature level, tiny, tiny head, enormous nose, squinched together eyes, and, you know, enormous mouth, super broad shoulders, um, but like a, a, an enormous slope to the shoulders, unrealistic slope, um, just really pushing that character pretty far. I think, you know, when I see this character, it's called Peasant, which I haven't really 
given that much thought to. But to me, it kind of looks like a a doofus thug. You know, like if there's a villain in a, in an animated movie, this is one of the thugs that that's you know just does whatever the bad guy says. And so you know, it, it conveys this idea of like a little brain, just not the smartest or not the sharpest tool in the shed, but he's big and bulky and intimidating. And um, I don't know for some reason I relate like bad hygiene and teeth missing to like the villains, which is kind of funny. Uh, anyway, so that's an example I think of expression in the character. He, he's the character is very much meant to represent who he is in in like the bigger picture. If this was a, a short film, for example, or, or an animated film, like his appearance directly mimics what his character is supposed to be, um, and, and in a very extreme way in the middle. Like at first glance, it's almost like it doesn't even register as a human at first, right? Like the the gap between the upper lip and the nose is enormous, uh, really, really squished eye and nose region. And the general shape of the face is kind of like a candy corn. So just a unique, a very unique style uh, to this character. The, the proportions are hilarious to me. Um, you know, even the, the expression is really extreme. Um, but uh, definitely far, far from reality. And then this guy on the right, it almost it's so far from reality, it almost doesn't register as a human. I mean, like there aren't any toes. It's clearly a skin type shader, but it just comes to these weird, you know, peaks. But, you know, we got, you can't deny like the, the massive like nipples and, you know, the facial features, uh, the hands, but like incredibly stylized and, uh, um, you know, we can go over the obvious. There's no shoulders. The anatomy is really, really tweaked. But I would, I would say, all things considered, this is still a human character. Um, which brings me to a point, I guess, if you haven't gathered, we are mainly talking about, um, in this class, we're talking about human stylization. And so that's kind of just where I defaulted to. If you want to do a creature, that's fine. It'll still, the principles will still apply. Um, but the focus is going to be humans if you haven't put that together. So, um, the last thing I'll say about this is the extremes. I, I'm kind of an extreme person, so I like the extremes in, in stuff. And so what I would compare in terms of appeal, I would compare the very stylized and the barely stylized as sort of like indie music where it doesn't necessarily appeal to the masses, but, um, there, I don't know, there's more freedom to kind of be expressive. And the people who do like indie music think it's the best thing in the world and they like don't listen to mainstream. Whereas in the middle, this is more mainstream. It's It can be safe, it can, it can be a little overdone at times, but it can also be, there is room for innovation in here. But like I can, I think I can speak for my wife who's, you know, grew up on Disney movies and isn't like a character connoisseur. She loves movies, but like, I think these types of characters, maybe not the one on the right, that's pretty appealing, but especially the the middle and left one, like there's something potentially uncomfortable about it, right? Like it's, it looks realistic, but I don't know, something's up with his nose. I've never seen a nose like that. I think it can conjure potentially uncomfortable feelings, but like for me, I get a big kick I, it doesn't make me uncomfortable. Well, it can actually, but I find that interesting. It's challenging my conventional perspective. And in this, in in the same way, like <laughs> when I first saw the um, the the nipples on this guy, I can't even. For some reason, it's just a funny word to like emphasize. But um, like I don't know. It's so in your face that it's like, what is going on here? It's uncomfortable. But then it's like, there's such a lovability. Like we've all seen that guy at the pool. Who has who has those? You know that's a very much a human thing, and and it's it's very plausible. But I just I just love that it's exaggerated here. So, anyway, my, my kid, I, I'm not sure you and I would love my kid watching watching a, a cartoon with these types of characters. I just don't know how if he's developed enough to appreciate it or if it would just kind of freak him out. But um, anyway, I, I just wanted to throw that in there that I kind of see the extremes as indie music and then the mid range as like main, uh, mainstream music radio friendly music, but I don't know. Music is kind of a, a big part of my life. So I like, I like relating to that. Okay. Um, that's, I believe. Yeah. So that's kind of the end of the lecture. Um, we'll talk about the agenda, but I want to take a break and just make sure I'm not missing any questions real quick. Um, oh, David Frazier. Good to see you in here, sir. Um, it's fun to see, like, I've seen a lot of people coming back and um, 
it's I don't know I've, I've got I treat you as like friends now like digital friends I you know like um, and it's good to see you in here so so thanks for stopping by thanks for being uh, present and and hanging out with me that's really what it feels like um, cool okay, I'm just seeing good comments I don't see any questions necessarily but uh, man comments worthy of me like I want to go back and like read through what you guys are thinking. Um, but all right, no questions. That's great. P again, like, please feel free to ask any questions along the way. Uh, maybe, it, you know, maybe there's less questions during the lecture, but um, during the demo, if you have any questions, do not hesitate. Uh, all right, so finally, week one agenda for this class. Uh, this week, I would love for you to train your eye and mind to stylize your perception. Um, practice simplifying and exaggerating reality and loosen up your sculpting approach. So um, stylizing your perception, I, I think that's a good way to, to ease into the stylization, especially if that's maybe not as natural to you, because we all perceive reality. Like that's just part of our game or part of our life. And, and so to be able to take reality that we, that is a standard to all of us and then translate that, like study it, pick out certain features, exaggerate it and translate it into a style. So basically a caricature, um, that's what I would I think is, is going to be a good icebreaker for the, stra the strategy of, of stylization. Um, and then also loosen up your sculpting approach. I put gestural sculpting. Really, I think what I mean is, is if you haven't sculpted in a while, like get practice with sculpting so that uh, we're going to be doing that a lot this class, this month. So just get used to it and um, yeah, get familiar, refamiliarize yourself with it. Um, okay, so the training to watch, art of sculpting, the caricature chapter. Um, that is exactly what I've described, um, an exercise in stylizing your perception. And um, it's also going to be the demonstration today. Um, but the homework assignment, sculpt that caricature and uh, post an image, post a screenshot or a render or a sketch fab embed to the thread. That's the big homework assignment. And the second part is to choose a piece of character concept art to drive this month's character. So. What I want for each of you this month is to, um, oh, a question. And it was super helpful to see question in capital, in uh, all caps. That really stood out to me. Um, from Rosalia, can we stylize an animal or does it need to be human? Right, okay, so um, I had mentioned just a few minutes ago that uh, you can do a, an animal. Um, the principles that we're gonna cover, that we're gonna demonstrate and teach, they absolutely will uh, translate. Um, and they're applicable there, but I'm not gonna be doing any animal specific teaching. Uh, mine's gonna be a human character and that's, I would say the default posture of the class is human, but you're welcome to do an animal if you would like. Um, because what's more important in that situation, I think is what you're passionate about. If you're more passionate for an animal project, do that um, rather than human. Um, is it okay if the concept art is already stylized? Yes, I actually pr I would recommend that. So this first week, is, is kind of to get the ball rolling. Uh, we're, the point of the class is not to create a caricature or to become caricature artists. It's just to get um, started in the stylization thing. And I'm gonna go over that now. Um, but to answer your question, I would prefer that it is already stylized. But I have a Pinterest board um, that where I collect all of my, uh, the, the artwork that I like as stylization, whether it's 3D or 2D. And you're welcome to look through this for reference or for inspiration, but um, like in terms of the artwork, like I've got several 2D pieces in here. Um, let me scroll down to find some. Here's some 2D hand reference. Um, here's a here's a an image, just a, a sketch, very stylized kind of person. So I would recommend you picking something like that or or this character, just a drawing of a stylization. Um, I don't I, I don't think it's I, I don't know, you could, I guess, but I would maybe prefer not like recreating a 3D scene like this, for example. Um, but yeah, wherever you wanna find stylized art, I would recommend you do it, whether it be DeviantArt or just Googling, or if you have a, a favorite artist, um, pick a piece of 2D concept art. It can be one angle. I would like it to be, I don't know, but I would like it to be full body to, so you can explore all of the anatomy. Um, if you're maybe, if you're, t um, Scrapped for time, or strapped, wow. If you're strapped for time this month, maybe do just a bust, like shoulders and up. But um, pick something stylized like this. It can be one angle or it can be multiple angles. I think I have some examples of like 
kind of pseudo turnarounds. Okay, so this guy in the middle, like we've got several. Oh, they're out, and they're not the same person. Never mind. Um, take that back. Okay, this one is an example. Like this is kind of what a, what I would get as a professional artist um, to create this character in 3D. And so if we just whoops, that's not there anymore. Uh, but this is a good example of like the type of art I would like you to pick. Um, but I want you to pick something that you're passionate about because that's very important to create something that gets you excited and that keeps you going um, throughout the learning process. If you just, if I were to assign you a character, I think, you know, a lot of people would be like, well, I don't care about this character and, and you don't end up making it through the class. But I, at the end of this, I would love to see everybody create a unique character that they were passionate about um, to share at the end and have a really cool final render um, or, you know, you know, viewport will pretty, will prettyify the viewport for you and have something really cool at the end of this. Um, so yeah, that's the other part of the assignment. Just, just scavenge the internet, find a piece of artwork that you like. What I'm going to use is this artist from, um, uh, CG cookie. Uh, they, they, um, Matthias Melly is his name. And he, he submitted this to one of the concept contests. And I, I loved it when I was doing the judging. Um, I loved this piece and asked if I could use it to, for this class. Um, and yeah, so this is what I'm gonna be focusing on and I'm gonna be creating this character. So yeah, pick your artwork, post that, um, say in the forum, like this is the character I intend to do. To do. If you have questions, is this character gonna be good? Please ask those and, and by the end of the week, we'll all get you uh, decided on what characters you're gonna create. All right, I think I missed some questions and I love seeing the all caps now. I love that. Um, okay, here we go. So mentioned your favorite band dude, but got crickets. Oh, <laughs> this is your opportunity to brag on Muse. Yeah. So David mentioned Muse is my favorite band. There's a whole discussion about this. I recently had to admit to myself that I feel like they're losing a little bit of their edge and that breaks my heart to say, but, um, anyway, that's a whole nother discussion. I'm just not, uh, it just, they just seem a little bit like older people trying to 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 do what made them famous. I don't know. That's a big discussion, and I feel like a hypocrite. I'm trying to love them for where they're at um, right now, and 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 that's that's a, an effort at the moment. But yes, they're totally my favorite band. I appreciate that that mention. Um, okay, question format is great to ask. Oh, okay, yeah. Thank you, Omar, c affirming that the question caps. Um, and, and maybe this will become an improvement. Like we do want to improve the live stream system so that we can have like a question queue. Maybe they can be upvoted. I mean, other systems do this too, um, but we're, we're t you know talking about improving these kind of things. Question from Zach. Uh, can we still submit homework after the class has ended? I'm not sure if I'm ready for the type of character creation yet, but would still love to try after I've gotten more comfortable with the sculpting. Um, yeah, I don't see why not. I mean, what I hear when you say that is, let's say you follow the class, but but you don't feel comfortable at the end, like posting at the quality that, that you want to. And so you take more time to create a character and can you post to this thread? Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, that would be kind of fun to see an old class thread pop up with, with someone who had, who had learned from it. Um, once the class is over, once March is finished, I'm going to unpin it from the community forum. And so you'll, you know, like, it won't be at the top anymore and you'll have to go find it. But um, yeah, I mean, you can you can totally submit homework afterward. I don't see a problem with that uh, at all. I think it would still pop up on my radar and I'd be able to grade it kind of thing. Um, let's see, are there, are there any blender contests? I really want to enter one. That came up again um, among the CG Cookie crew. And the biggest problem, so the biggest problem Hmm. it is like someone to own the contest because we're, pre we're spread pretty thin. We're a small crew here and we're always trying to do new things and, and arguably we spread ourselves too thin to where we can do it a lot, but only do it mediocre at best. And so contest became one of those things. Tim did a really good job at them, but for Blender, it's just been a little bit harder uh, to get someone to own it. And we kind of want to reach out to a community member, see if they will own it. But we, you know, it's just on the back burner. One of the many things that we have on the back burner and also like, like prizes to me, I think contests should have like 
big prizes, you know, like a Wacom tablet or um, let's see what other big prizes, uh, you know, a new computer monitor. I don't know, something big. That's when I've competed in contests, that's the only reason I've done it is to, there's the main reason to do it is to get some cool stuff. Um, and so I don't know, we don't, we don't necessarily, that, that's a lot of work to get sponsors and stuff like that. So anyway, that's kind of why we haven't done a lot of contests recently and we don't have any on the immediate horizon, but to hear that you're interested definitely makes us want to re readdress that and hopefully come to come to something because we have a cool contest system that Nick, our developer built, and then Tim left and Tim was the one who was going to use it a lot. So anyway, uh, TBD about, about contests, but if you are interested in anyone else, please express that interest and, uh, yeah, and we'll try to make it happen. Let's see a weekly challenge, like the one by a weekly challenge. That's it. That, that to me is more casual and less of a contest. See, I imagine like contests being like a big deal, um, where even like we can get other people, maybe ZBrush artists like try Blender in the contest because like, because they really want the prize or something to kind of expose new people, bring new people in. Um, that's, so I imagine like contests being uh, maybe once or twice a year, like big ones. But anyway, this is just me. Uh, more to, to come about contests in the future. Uh, question, could I use that Dragon Knight character I, I was working on, the muscular one I showed you in Skype? Um, let me try and remember that real quick. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't see why not. Maybe I'll look back at Skype and, and give you, David, give you something, um, give you a definitive qu uh, answer. But no, I think that should be fine. Um, yeah, and pick up that, that character. Yeah, I guess that's fine. It'd be kind of cool if you started from scratch with this, but with all of us, but oh well, you know, it's not a big deal. Um, question, I plan to sculpt in ZBrush and re rework or tune render in Blender. Is that okay? Yeah, that's okay. Um, ultimately, software is not the main point in, in, in what we do in general, um, but also philosophically, we, we believe that Blender is just the most accessible tool to teach the underlying principles that are shared by all software. That to say, yeah, go ahead and sculpt in ZBrush, rework um, and or do whatever you want in Blender. And uh, the main point is that you learn some character stylization things. And if it doesn't bother you that I'm gonna be using Blender and not really talking ZBrush at all, then that's, that's totally fine. Let's see. Yeah, okay, so Grady, you mentioned Blender Guru has several throughout the year. Like that's another good point. Like he has great contests that are big, I think, and, and have, you know, have a good, cons like a good, uh, consistent, you know, um, um, <laughs> I can't think of the word, a good schedule that happens, you know, enough times throughout the year. Um, so like, would we be doing it just to compete with him or what? I'm not really sure that, but contests are a bit of a question mark for me. Um, how do they work and where can I get more details? William, if you're asking about contests, uh, maybe submit a, a um, use the, the orange plus button on our site to submit a ticket and we can we can talk about that or or start a thread. Um, look first to see if there is a thread in the community forum about Blender contests. I feel like there there is maybe drum up some some more uh, discussion about it. But um, oh, you're not talking about that. I think you're talking about weekly challenge. Sorry, I just butted in on a on a chat conversation and I was off. Um, Okay, Omar referencing Dwight Schrute and how he says question. Yeah, that that's great. Um, man, what a classic show. All right, I think we have, I think I've caught up on the question. The most important reward is knowledge and experience. Thank you, Giannis. I, I, I agree. Um, in terms of contest, yeah, yeah, I, you're right. I guess... So maybe I'm just being a little transparent. When contests come for me, I'm like, I want that cool thing and I'm gonna put a lot of effort into this this particular contest to try and win that thing. But like, that's what gets me in the door. And then once I see other people working, you know, like I'll comment on their stuff, they'll comment on mine and it becomes more communal. And, and I certainly learn a lot along the way, but I don't know, t time becomes precious and I, I need some sort of big, big, big prize personally. Um, question for homework. Do we just post it to the thread in the community form? Yes. And that does make me, that does remind me. So when you're going to post homework, I'll just do it as an example, um, to distinguish it from everything else, from every other kind of post, like at the bottom, for example, I finished my homework. 
I just come down to the thread on any page because it'll it'll automatically be put at the end. And just homework uh, week one, homework submission week one. And then I'm gonna bold that. And then below that, you can, uh, if you want, it's optional, but like add some, some a, a brief description, one or two sentences or, or however much you want to share. Like I enjoy getting insight into what you learned along the way or what was difficult um, about the process. So let's say this week is a caricature and um, here's my, if I can type Justin, wow. Wow, Justin Bieber caricature. It was difficult because his face is so generic, it's handsome. Okay, so like that's a little bit of information about the the uh, project itself. It's optional. I like to get a little bit of insight into specifically what happened for you in the process. You don't have to post anything, but then after that, just post an image um, of of what that was specifically about. So of uh, what your homework actually is. So yeah, um, and if it's an embed code, like if you wanna do a sketch fab, so in the, uh, I believe all of you should have access to this. It, you have a code view over here. And if you click on that, you can simply copy and paste the sketch fab code into, into your post. And um, so yeah, if you wanna do it as a 3D model for me to rotate around, that'd be sweet. Um, but it's a lot of extra work. But anyway, that's kind of how you can submit and then just add the reply. And I'm going to be able to distinguish it because of the homework submission week one, week two, and so forth. Um, all right, cool. So one more question. Your ticket writing police officer is also a great example of a stylized character and the result I think you're looking for. Um, do you have a JPEG of that handy to show? Uh, yeah, I can. Yeah, okay. So I think what you maybe, let's see great example of a stylized character. Yeah, I'll, I'll just, I was trying to see if there's more context. Um, let's see, do, 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 your profile. And yeah, this guy. Um, so this is the one you're talking about, I believe. And and yeah, so I think this is a, an example of a stylized character that, that I created. That was actually for a contest. Yeah, Pin Shapes Toy Design Contest. I forgot what they were, I forgot what their prize was, but I, I liked it. Maybe oh, it was a Cintiq, I think. Sorry, sorry. I, I'm probably such a jerk to some of you for wanting to or for doing contests for the prize. But um, anyway, I worked really hard. I learned a lot about 3D printing, to, to y'all's point. Um, and that was a really fun project. So um, by the end of this this actual class, I actually want to teach you. My goal is to teach you some some like texturing techniques, mainly just painting, like painting color. I'm not going to dive into like a bunch of different texture maps, you know, specular and I'll be in, uh, not albedo, but uh, you know, metalness and all that kind of stuff. It's mainly just going to be about painting a 3D character. Um, and so I would actually love to see this, this like painted by the end and not just a, a like grayscale or single color model. But, but I appreciate you pointing that out. Um, this is definitely a stylized character with super extreme um, proportions, you know, like I was going for I was going for this police officer who, you know, envision is always prepared for like World War III to happen and like believes his his duty to the people is to be packing heat and like ready to defend them at any cost. So he's super buff up top. He's got chicken legs because he he skips leg day, you know, kind of stereotypical big buff dude. Um, but until World War III happens, he just has to sign tickets, you know, like give people speeding tickets and very minor offenses, but he looks super bulky and badass along the way. That was kind of the, that's what I was trying to express in this character. Hopefully that came out. Um, but uh, I did not, I did not even place in the contest, but the people at Pin Shape, they did reach out to me and say they liked, they liked it. So that was rewarding enough. Um, but, uh, okay, cool. So is there any, another question from Zach, are you going to model the outfit accessories of the concept or just make the base model? Um, no, I I plan on doing the entire thing, right here is the question. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna plan on doing the entire character as far as this guy. I want to put clothes on him. In fact, I want to I want to sculpt him. My my idea is to sculpt him in pose. But we're gonna get into all this later. But the workflow would be sculpt him in pose. So like you real so when you do the initial sculpt, you capture the essence of his character, and then we're gonna transfer that 
into a, an animation friendly model. So we're gonna neutralize it, put his arms out. I like A pose, put him in A pose, um, retopologize him. And then for final presentation and texturing, I might put him back into the pose, but as the animation friendly model. That's kind of the idea for this character, but definitely we're not just doing the base mesh. We're gonna go all out, create the, all the accessories and things. Man, we're getting some good questions. Um, is our aim to create a pose character or are we doing T pose character? Okay, yeah, I didn't even see that, but it, it, it it's, yeah, that's kind of what I just um, described. Po posed is, is maybe best. I think that's a posed character is the most expressive. Frankly, looking at a T pose is kind of boring and, and not recommended, especially if you want to put it on your demo reel or your portfolio. It's just, it's it's not it's not really recommended. Um, what, one thing I like about this character is that he's kind of that sweet spot. He's got a he's got a noticeable pose with his arm you know wrapped around like this, but he's not like it's not that far. Excuse me from a neutral pose. Like his feet and his legs are somewhat neutral pose, so it's not going to be that difficult to pose him. And it's kind of a good in between. It is a pose, but it's close enough to neutral that it's not going to be a ton of extra work. Um, but yeah, I, I like pose personally, I would challenge you to do a posed character to really sell your character in the end, to sell the fullness of the character. Um, curious how you'll see the unposing of the character, um, for retopo. Uh, yeah, that'll, that, that'll be, that's a process. I did it a lot professionally. If this was a typical workflow. Like we would give a, we'd be given a piece of concept art. We want to create it. We want to sculpt it conceptually at the most authentic place so that they sign off on the model. And they're like, yeah, this is what we want. And then we go into the modeler's work of like turning it into an animation friendly thing. So that's the workflow I use professionally and I want to share, uh, teach to you guys as well. Um, I'm curious how many people are watching. Okay, 57 it looks like, that's pretty good. Um, but yeah, about half of what RSVP'd. Uh, let's see, question not, Question, not really. High poly end polish, okay. High poly end polish pose character that will be reworked to low poly for workflow, question mark. So I'm not gonna be doing this low poly. I, yeah, I should I should outline that, I suppose. Um, it's gonna be high poly, like it's gonna be modeled for subdivision smoothing. Um, so it's not gonna be game res. That wasn't really the angle I was going after. It could be converted to that later, but I was gonna just do animation friendly for rendering kind of thing. Um, but yeah, high, high, highly polished, high-end model in every respect. That's kind of the goal. Um, another question, does, does that mean we'll be learning some basic skeletal setup for posing uh, the production model or will we just move the mesh around? I'm not exactly sure, but Rigify is an amazingly quick and competent tool to be able to do a quick skeleton, a quick rig, pose your character. Uh, so I might go that direction, um, but I've also posed the character in the creature course. I think I posed the character just by moving the mesh around. So I'm not really sure. I, I, we'll see how it goes and once we get to that point. Um, cool, all right, I think I've answered the questions. Thanks guys for letting them rip. I'm, I'm, I, it's very satisfying to be able to answer questions that I know are relevant to you guys. So do not hesitate with questions. I'm going to, I'm going to move on now. We've got uh, wow, that was an hour already. So I usually treat these about an hour and a half. Um, but I want to demonstrate the caricature because yeah, we're going to, I'm going to focus on John Goodman, um, for my caricature because, um, he, I mean, I like, I like him as an actor and he's got very distinct facial features, which makes it easy to hone in on those features and exaggerate them and get a hopefully recognizable result. Now, if anyone thinks this is terrible, let me know and, and I will try and do better during the demo, but I believe I've hit enough of a likeness and a caricature aesthetic, um, of, of Mr. Goodman. And, um, and so th there's a point about that. Like I mentioned Justin Bieber as kind of a joke in the, um, in the example, but, but, uh, um, I lost my train of thought. Oh, but, but like beautiful people or like popular people who, who are known to be like pretty people often pretty and beautiful is like, is synonymous with like generic and generic people are hard to like pick out specific features to exaggerate. 
Um, they're just more difficult like that. Now, it's not a hard, fast rule. I think George Clooney is a handsome man, but he has very distinct features that can be exaggerated. Um, so, but my point is when you choose a caricature, and I, I would like you to choose your own, you're welcome to do John Goodman if you'd like. Um, but if you do your own, pick a... Number one, I think a celebrity is a good idea because we all should kind of know that character and can can know if, 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 we, uh, if we recognize him. Um, you don't have to, but like celebrity is a good idea. And also one that's very, has distinct features. I can think of like Willem Dafoe before John Goodman, I was looking at like Jerry Seinfeld, like they have en enough, you know, noticeable, recognizable features that they're easy to exaggerate, but okay. So that's what I'm going to focus on for the rest of the stream. Um, yeah. And so let's dive right into Blender and we'll go over the whole process of, of like analyzing the face and I'm using Blender 2.79. And I guess I can just open up that file and kind of, that is not the viewport shading I wanted. Let's see. So something I like to commonly do, you guys have probably seen this before if you've watched my stuff, but um, I turn off, I go to my user preference, go to the system tab and turn off all lights except for the top one and just move it to the front. So it's like a headlight. Um, that's how I prefer to do sculpting and look at, look at models uh, as I work. It's a very unflattering uh, lighting style. And so that me it, when it's unflattering, it makes all the mistakes pop out um, and, and uh, easy to identify and fix. So easier to identify and fix. Um, oh yeah, Steve Buscemi, that's a great one. That's a good suggestion for to do a, a caricature. Um, <laughs> cool, all right, let us get started then. I'm gonna just start a new scene going to delete the camera and light. And I also want to turn on region overlap. Where is that at? System region overlap, just to gain a little bit more perceived real estate in the 3D view. Let's get rid of, I'm just setting up my work stage, my work space right now. I'm getting rid of the timeline. We don't need it. And I'm going to drag out my properties panel in another window at the bottom, very commonly something that I do. And I'm going to change this to the UV image editor and open up a montage of images. Let's see, where am I? Okay, yeah, this image right here is my John Goodman collage. All these are uh, CC Creative Commons images from Flickr and, uh, and putting them in a collage like this gives me multiple angles. Just, um, uh, I think I've gone over this before about how to set up your reference and we've got a, a pretty, pr clear profile view. We've got him laughing extremely. We've got in the middle is kind of where I focus on kind of a, a middle of the road smile and, um, and various other angles, a couple different ages. Uh, so yeah, this is a, a good overall picture of John Goodman. And I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be Xeroxing it, like, like building the model directly over top of the image. I'm just going to use all of these images to influence my sculpture process. And at the end, hopefully end up with a caricature that you guys recognize. So um, it's more of a, it's less of a scientific approach to uh, matching reference and, and more like artistic. So Mr. Goodman, where to get started from? Uh, question, so from the homework, uh, it is to create the basic shape of the character in Blender. Uh, well, actually I would like for you to get to this point. Like, um, I mean, it's not, yeah, you're right. It's not like a super detailed, uh, caricature. There's not poor detail or anything, but I did try and achieve all of the features necessary to uh, represent the character. So this quality is kind of what I'm looking for out of the character. If you want caricature, caricature, if you want to go more, if you want to add that poor detail, two thumbs up to that. Um, but this is the quality that I'm, I'm, I would like to see from you guys. Um, Okay, yeah, William, so um, doing that is so common, you should make it a screen or maybe turn it on by default. So I used to do it by default, but then as an educator, like an online educator, every time I start a tutorial, I have to like backtrack because how would they know that I've done it? You know, I have to err on the side that whoever's watching this probably doesn't know how I set it up. So I try and keep it as default as possible. That's why, that's why I end up changing it, you know, frequently and you've seen it multiple times. So that's annoying, but that's kind of the reason I do it. Um, all right, let's get right to it. Uh, this this cube, we'll use that. I'm gonna hit Control-4 
just to subdivide it at, at four levels. And then Alt C, I'm gonna convert it to a mesh to apply all of that geometry. And then out of habit, I like to move my object above the ground plane. And this is going to be my head in the end. And I'm going to switch from my mouse over, wait a minute, what did I do? Oh yeah, I, so I gotta reset the uh, uh, lighting real quick. Just a second, there we go. All right, now I'm gonna switch to sculpt mode and we'll get right to work. Enabling dynamic topology. I like my detail size to start at 10. Um, subdivide collapse. And yeah, so we're good to go. Uh, X mirror, I do wanna leave that on for the sculpting process. And now I'm gonna switch to my pen. And um, yeah, the first step, I need to just get the anatomy of a bust. I need some shoulders, I need a neck, and I need a head. Um, qu a quick question, a couple questions. Um, do we have access to your presentation? Oh, no, you don't. I guess I, I yeah, I can post that. I'll, I'll um, yeah, I'll, I, maybe I'll put it in the description of the class, in the in the description of the thread, and just link, look for week one, and I'll, I'll try and remember to link that, um, that presentation for you to look through. Um, and then another question, will we be working on the same character all month? Yes, so, well, except for this first week. Yeah, that, that's a good question, actually. This first week is an exception. Just pick whoever you wanna work on. Um, uh, whoever's face, you can do your own face if you wanna try and do the do a, a caricature of that. Just be sure to post a picture so we can like, you know, judge it by something. And uh, so, yeah, this, this is a unique week, but starting next week, week two through four, are all gonna be devoted to the same caricature. Wow, the same character art. And because it's gonna, it's gonna take a while to create. Um, all right, cool. Do we have access to your presentation? Yeah, excellent. All right, I'm gonna try and keep an eye on the chat, but I also wanna, I wanna try in the next 30 minutes or so to get, to get somewhere with the, with the actual um, sculpture, the caricature. So I'm gonna try and focus a little more in Blender. No, um, no if, I hope that's not offensive. But uh, all right, so what I'm gonna do is grab the snake hook brush to create the shoulders and the neck and simply drag down very simply for a neck and then out to the side for shoulders. Okay, so we've got this kind of upside down T and it's gonna be very, very skinny. Also, I need to note that the Y axis is gonna be front to back and specifically this is going to be the front. Okay, so that we're all like aligned to the same orientation. And uh, so obviously very, very skinny. We need to increase this. This is gonna be really messy starting off, but I'm just trying to dive in and create this as fast as possible. Let me also make sure that my options, size and strength are unified. Um, I like each brush to share the same strength so that there are no surprises. All right, let's bring out, well, kind of smooth all this down, whoops. And the neck, the front of the body is, there's kind of a slant toward the front of the body, just a general human anatomy. So I'm gonna bring the front down and bring the back up. Maybe grab clay strips, start building up the back. I mean, really, I need to make him much, much bigger. He's a fairly large guy. But I'm just trying to rough out a bust shape at the moment. Let's pull down kind of a chin, a chin-esque shape. And then smooth out the head from the front. Definitely need to... Bring it in a little bit. All right. Let's just smooth out everything in the bust. All right, so we've got a generic bust shape. Let's inflate that out a little bit. Okay, cool. Um, can you make custom she keyboard shortcuts? A shortcut for deleting the grease pencil would be useful. Let's see, um, that's a great question. So um, I'm not sure that you can. Let's see, if I because if I use the grease pencil, like this X button, I think, you know, it has to be linked to this specific layer. 
And if and I don't know how to set the um, hotkey for that. If you right click on a button, you can add a shortcut. Wow, let's let's try it. Um, whoops, new layer. Wow, let's try it. Um, a non keyboard. What? Oh, okay. So now it's saying non keyboard shortcut that I can't add one there. I, I, I would say that you cannot, but if you can, I would also love to know that because I would love a quick way to delete that, delete grease pencil layers as well. All right. Now that I've got a bust, I need to start a bust base. I need to consider the facial features of Mr. Goodman. Um, and what I love about him is, well, what I love about him, but what's so distinguishing about him is his cheeks, his cheeks and his eyes and his chin and kind of the potato shape of his face. So for example, you know, it's smaller up top around the eyes and forehead and then the cheeks all the way down through the neck get big. And so you've got this potato shape. Let me switch the color so you can see that a little better. So you can kind of get an idea for the shape. And as a caricature, you know, uh, exercise, we just need to push that shape more. If the top is smaller than the bottom, then let's make the bottom much bigger. This is exaggerated, but like, let's make it much bigger and the top smaller, right? And so that's how we exaggerate those facial features. Also the, let's see, trend. It's also annoying to like quickly erase grease pencil. I don't know. I don't use it much beyond uh, just annotation. So maybe I need to practice with it more. But um, another facial feature is his eyes. They're really, really like squished. And uh, when he's smiling, they're squinty. But also they have this um, diagonal downward away from the nose. And so what, what I would want to do is exaggerate that feature and really make it you know, diagonal down, that kind of thing. Really squint the eyes even more so. Um, so that's a facial feature to hone in on and exaggerate. Um, also the hair, in particular, the hair that he's got a little bit different hairstyle from being older and being younger and, you know, being much younger. But I kind of went for this helmet hair. It's the majority of the pictures. And so the helmet hair, you know, emphasize that and really give this bulbous nature um, to the hair once we start sculpting it. Um, the chin, like check out the distance. This is this is a place that I quickly look on people. The distance between the nose and the upper lip compared to the distance between the chin and the bottom lip. Like that's a huge distance. So just push that further, right? And uh, we'll push the mouth even closer to the nose and give that chin even more um, more volume. That that's These are kind of the things I want to think about right now. Kind of make notes to myself um, about his his particular features and just remember to well first we're going to try and achieve them a little more a little more accurately but also push them once we get it somewhat accurate we just want to push it further um and uh yeah that's kind of how we want to approach the caricature process um william you're saying you make it look so easy just a couple of strokes and you have whatever feature you were aiming for uh, you know, like I rehearsed this yesterday. I've sculpted a lot of heads in my time. Um, it's just it's just through practice. It's plain and simple. You know how many busts I've had to create this way? Uh, frankly, it's not even fast enough. I'm like, come on, that should have been faster in my head just because I, I do it so often. But at some point, could you please show the technique to rotate stuff in sculpt mode without messing it up? Um, because the rotate tool seems to be uh, for a different purpose, more like w working on ornament. I think you're talking about the twist tool, maybe? Is that the one you're talking about? It's just kind of like spiraling. Um, yeah, if you can clarify that, I'd love to do, I'd love to understand what you mean by rotate and, and how to go about that. All right, I don't see any other questions. Okay, cool. All right, let's get back to it. Um, keeping in mind that the features we discussed a big one is is the the bulbous nature of of the bottom half of his face. So uh, I need a point of reference. Um, so let's let's start with the eyes actually. Uh, so I have have something you know like a singular point of reference for all of my other shapes. 
and uh, we'll use clay strips and I'm just going to hold control to chunk out the ocular region. I'm just holding control, it's kind of in the middle of the head, holding control and just chunking that area out. Okay, maybe smooth the bottom portion and that creates an ocular region. And now we can also, with the same brush, just not holding control, bringing it out, we can start to create a nose shape. And these are completely stand in, but just as point of reference. So very quickly we get a nose with which we can start to base our shapes around. Now, right now the shape is, is not what we want. It's not potato-y, it's just more circular. So we need to bring in the sides here with my grab brush. We need to bring in the sides and kind of shrink the upper head while pulling out the bottom. And then we start to have the question of like, well, what about the, the, uh, the ears? And if we look at the ears, that's another feature that we can kind of identify. The hair combined with the shape of the head and the bulbous nature of the cheeks creates this V shape right in there like that. And then the ear kind of sits inside. So we want to create that as well. And that's another shape that we can exaggerate. And so, you know, with my crease brush, which I also like to switch to add by default, holding control, maybe not quite so strong, but I'm gonna push in that V shape, okay? Really set it inside of the head. Yeah, I think that's gonna do what we want. And then I'm gonna take my clay strips with a high strength and just start to build up a mass, right? Like just push it out in a straight line. And this is going to become our ear. And then we'll use my uh, grab brush and we'll push it backward. Okay, now we've got an ear started. So, um, yeah, really this is just an exercise at the moment of getting our anatomy started because we can't really stylize something that's not there. So we need the shapes in the first place. So this shouldn't look anything like uh, John Goodman yet, but we do need the geometry in there in the first place. So the next bit of geometry is also a very distinguishing feature and that's the laugh line. So they're, they're very creased uh, on his face. And so that in the end is going to be a feature that I zero in on and really push. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to loosely cut it in just to give me a reference point. That's really what this is about so far, just developing reference points. And then as I smooth this other side around where the muzzle will be, I'm gonna leave, I mean, I'm not gonna smooth out the left side of the crease that I just cut. I'm actually going to inflate it and that gives me kind of a cheek structure, but smoothing it on this side gives me more of a muzzle. And then we need a point of reference for the mouth. So let's just draw a line in there. And actually I'm just gonna also add in some lips, rough in the lip shape, pinching it first and then also pinching on the top. And then the bottom. Now pinching with subdivide collapse, you know, is a little bit of a, well, excuse me, contradiction, but um, because it does auto generate the geometry and it doesn't get super sharp, but that's okay. I'm just keeping it gestural right now. And then uh, I actually do want to inflate these two surfaces together. So I will switch that to subdivide collapse or subdivide edges and inflate the lips. And now it looks much more like lips, at least a starting point. That's funny. So, yeah, I forgot. I even forgot. I don't know if I've ever seen the Flintstone movie with John Goodman. I do remember it, but I don't know if I've ever seen it. But yeah, I mean, his character in um, oh Walter from from uh, the Big Lebowski. Golly, what a good good part. What a great movie. Um, all right, so we've got the mouth roughed in. Let's go ahead and add the chin, which is a super distinguishing feature of his. Um, so that one's going to be fun and actually really easy to. <laughs> to get right, it's just so obvious. Um, it's such an obvious candidate for exaggeration, I love it. All right, so we're gonna 
push it out and we're not going extreme yet. We're again, just still in the, in the get the anatomy to a recognizable place first, but we can push it further than that at least. And um, as I go along the way, you know, start to add features, you can see that, that where I've touched so far has more geometry and so I can smooth it well, but like, there's still areas with broad geometry. And so smoothing this is not done quite so well. So, you know, I'm taking opportunities to just lightly touch some of these areas and then smooth them out because ultimately I want the geometry to feel fairly consistent. I don't want these huge polygons to last forever. Um, but all right, there's another facial feature kind of roughed in and Let's see, maybe bring around the bottom of the chin. Let's see. Yeah, kind of get an idea that, that the mass of his cheeks actually follows down right under the chin, all the way down this way. His neck is too thin. I think we can all agree on that. So let's bring that out. And still probably a broken record, but not quite to the exaggeration level yet. We're just trying to get the anatomy in there. And if we're measuring it against anything, we're trying to get it to match our reference. We're not to the exaggeration yet. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Now maybe it's time, let's think through this. Now I think we've got all the, the anatomy in that we really need for reference points. I think at this point we can start to refine um, our details, like add in the eyelids, for example. I'm going to push back the ocular region a little bit. His forehead is pretty wide and creates a rectangular shape. Oh, yeah, I think what you mean is, um, like, a court, especially in reference to his head or his hair, yeah, we do get a rectangular shape. Um, that being said, I don't want to make it square quite yet. Or I don't want to make it square as the underlying skull. I just, I know that the hair is what's going to make that rectangular shape more so than making it in the head geometry. Um, but that is a good point. Like looking for those shapes is is where your, your eyes need to be going. And so that's, that's a really good sign. The dude will abide. Amen. He was good in Oh Brother Where Art Thou. He, yeah, he, he scared me in Oh Brother Where Art Thou, which I think as the Cyclops creature or the creature he was representative of the cyclops in in the iliad i guess or the odyssey the odyssey but yeah like there were some close shots of him and his like breathing and he had a messed up eye if i remember yeah he, he creeped me out in oh brother where art thou but all right i think the first aspect of of starting to create um extreme features of his is going to start with the eyes and i'm going to first with my inflate brush just push in a little bit more around the ocular region. First pushing in because you know, like our skull is shaped that way. And then I'm gonna take the clay strips brush and build out a shape in the middle that's representative of the eye itself, the eyeball. Okay, so I start to get that mass. And you know, keep in mind that it, it needs to be somewhat spherical so, you know, like build up the middle a little bit more than the other side, or the others, yeah, the other side. All right, so now that I've got that in there, let's go ahead and cut in the eyelid shapes. With the crease brush, I wanna get really close because I'm using relative detail, that's how I like to sculpt. So I'm just gonna cut in his eyelid shapes make it a little bit wider on the inside, but then increasingly getting more and more squished toward the outside, right? So like this shape is bigger and then it kind of dwindles down to a point. That's kind of what I'm creating. Keeping in mind that we it's free rain, it's free ground. Um, free opportunity to uh, make this extreme. So I'm gonna pinch this a lot. 
And I think it's a little too early maybe to, to be subdivide edges. I'm going to go back to subdivide collapse. Be a little bit more free with it. And so I've, I've also pushed the eyes a little bit closer together. And that's kind of to emphasize the overall small shape of the, of the head uh, in compared to the, the cheeks. But they might be a little too close at the moment. I'm going to let it, let it go a little bit longer and then see if I need to pull them out. Well, now that I say that, I actually do think I'll pull them out a little bit. I'll keep them small and really, really squinted. Okay, and then out, outside of uh, the eyelids, once we leave the eyelids and go into the side of the head, you know, we've got these really great crow's feet. So I wanna emphasize that. And in general, we got this sort of crease going down the side of the head. So let's start to introduce that. I'm gonna make my brush really big so it affects more of the head. Maybe smooth that out. And we got a long way to go before this is recognizable yet. I didn't think the lecture would take quite that long. Um, all right, I'm gonna zoom out, kind of think about it. We've got a more exaggerated uh, diagonal to the eyelid, which is good. We've got the crease. It's not really a crow's foot. Let's see if we can add that, which means a couple other wrinkles kind of emanating out from this. Pinch those together, make sure they're tight. Okay. Another feature, look at the, the dent in his head right here, coming down like this. That's something I'll add right now as well. Just with a crease brush, just push it a little bit further than what we see in the art, in the art, in the photo. And I'm gonna change it to subdivide edges. I just don't like that it's auto generating the geometry down there. Let's see, I'm gonna put that, put that a little bit further up. Okay, I think his eyebrow maybe is a little bit too far out. Let's try and bring this whole side of the head in along with the eyebrow. Okay. The bag under the eye, that's another very distinguishing feature. Let's add that. All right. Starting to get somewhere. He's got these wonderful little uh, creases and dents. Like I mentioned the one in the forehead right here. That's great. Um, the crow's feet, also a great feature. But then around the cheek, I love this thing. Like it's so easy to dial in on and exaggerate in comparison to the cheek. So these are features I'm thinking about right now, these little dents in his face. Yeah, I love him for caricature. He's just an ideal candidate for it. And again, smoothing this, this side of the cheek, but not the other, gives us that um, bulbous feel to the, the cheek itself, emphasizing the smile expression. Though, maybe not quite that much. All right. Let's address the nose. We're starting to hone in on the features, which is very good, but the nose is grossly disproportionate in terms of geometry and, and polygon count than the rest of the features so far. So let's spend some time there. Again, a const, uh, constant thing that I'm doing is uh, looking back at his features, exaggerating them in my head. So the, no the nostril to me, they look really small, and so I'll just try and make them even smaller. And then the uh, 
front of the nose being bigger, we'll just push that a little bit farther. So these are the shapes that I'm breaking down. Whoops. Okay, those are the shapes I'm breaking down and I'm going to push further in the sculpt. Just three little circles. Pretty simple. And with my pinch brush, we've got a nostril sh uh, started, but it's too big. The real meat and pork chops. That's awesome. Wonderful creases and dents. Um, I did say I was going to get to the meat and potatoes. Thank you for remembering. It's all I'm, it's all interconnected. I, I so carefully rehearsed this stream. I just connected everything together. <laughs> That's not true at all. Um, all right, so working down the nose. This is also an exercise in just trying to get my anatomy finalized or fleshed out. So smoothing these shapes. He's got very defined creases coming from the laugh line all the way around the nostril. So definitely let's make that distinct. Cut it in first and then we'll pinch it and then push it in again. Yeah, very, very distinct. And then also with such deep creases, I'm going to go back and inflate around the crease because that's going to give me a much better impression of like overlapping flesh. It's super important in my opinion. Cut the crease and then inflate over top. And that is how you get the overlapping flesh appearance. All right. With that cheek kind of in there now, um, I can see a difference where my cheek is is you know very straight into the nostril, but this but his has a more of a an S curve. So let's try and imitate that, maybe exaggerate it even by pulling the middle down. Also, I can tell that my okay, I'm using the default uh, curve on my grab brush, and I which is just the S curve. I like to modify that for a much more intuitive uh, experience. All right, so I'm starting to get more of an S-curve shape. That's what I'm after. And with that, there seems to be a concentration of flesh right here in the cheek that manifests as like a bulge. And so that's another, that's another distinguishing feature. Let's uh, puff it out and make it pronounced. With my inflate brush, will be perfect for that. Okay, there we go. How, okay, so now as I look kind of from a, a, a down up angle at the, at the face, I can see that my S curve in the cheek has gone awry from this angle. And I don't want it to push down like that. The muzzle needs to be, you know, more, more uh, rounded. So that means from this angle, it needs to be, it's the bulb, it's this concentration of flesh that actually gives it that S shape. Okay, that's much better. All right, as we start to make our way into the muzzle and the, the lips and the chin, it sh we, sh we should start to have a likeness more like uh, Mr. Goodman. So uh, the lips especially, I think are gonna be a big one. Um, okay, question. Um, sorry to deviate a bit, but my ultimate goal is to make some animations for my kid. Uh, that's awesome. What are verts and try counts you would recommend for a character? Uh, maybe not, um, 
maybe not exact, like a range. Is there a range scene-wise that you would recommend? Uh, if you're trying to create an animation, you'll want it to be, you um, it's hard to know exactly. If you want it to be like a game resolution model, something that can like play real time in the viewport, you'll want, you'll want it to be fairly low poly count, like, you know, maybe, maybe 10,000 tries, triangles, something like that. Um, if you want it to play in the viewport or be kind of like a, a game application, um, uh, you can go pr much higher in a, or you can go higher in a, in a render, uh, in a renderable character. But, um, uh, I, I would say I'll just stick with the 10, 10,000 polygon range. Try for that. That'll be your most interactive and a good place to start um, for that kind of question. All right. And thank you, Matt, for um, answering, uh, offering an answer to that. That's the kind of helping each other thing that, that makes this class work and builds a really good community. So thank you for that. That's the kind of resource, man. You're being, you're doing what I ask. Thank you. Um, all right. So the mouth, it might seem subtle and it might seem straightforward, but take a look at all the interesting un, uh, variation in the straight line, so to speak. So we've got this nice curve. I better change my grease pencil color. All right. We got this corner of the mouth. Really cool. Oh, really cool. It's just a noticeable curve. And then we actually go down in the mouth and then up and then down again. All right. So this sort of inverted seagull shape. Okay. So that's the, where the lips meet, but then on the upper half, we've got this shape and then a smooth curve on the bottom. Okay. Terrible drawing, but that's, those are the shapes that I'm looking for and that I'm going to push. Okay. So we'll start with that inverted seagull. First of all, first the corner of the mouth. Okay. Just drawing what I see that shape with the crease brush. And then make sure that we have enough depth because the corner of the mouth, remember it's not right now. My smile is too flat. Okay. That's not what I want. Um, as you smile, you know, your the corner of your mouth actually goes back um, as much as it goes sideways, if not more. So you, I think my, you might think that smiles just kind of go wide, but they actually go back as well. And so right now my sculpture does not have it going backward enough. Oh man, I really find erasing the grease pencil to be annoying. Um, so one thing I need to do is push the corners of the mouth backward. There we go. It's feeling much more natural. And the crease is, is pretty strong. Just kind of smooth out this this area right here. Okay, that's good. The crease is pretty strong. I will inflate it just like I did the, the uh, laugh line. By inflating it, we get that impression of two pieces of flesh like meeting and pushing against each other. All right, and then now we we can start to use our grab brush to create that inverted seagull shape. Okay, and I'm pushing it a little further. Hopefully you can tell that. Bring up the corner of the mouth a little bit. Nice. There we go. I like that. That's looking good. And then to refine the actual lips. See, I need to smooth this. with my crease brush at a low strength, just going to draw the upper lip shape. And you know, the, the lip sort of blurs out in the middle, almost where it disappears. 
And so I'm going to draw it distinct at first, but then blur it out. I mean, smooth it out. Hope that that made sense. At least I'm going to try that first. And if it doesn't end up working, let's try the bottom before I readdress that. And this one, again, there's no, it's just a, a nice smooth curve. All right, let's do it with the crease brush first and then uh, pinch it up really nice. Okay, it's starting to look pretty good. I think his lips maybe need a little bit more volume. So with the inflate brush, I'm just gonna focus it on this bottom lip. I see you guys making jokes over there in the chat and I love them. Right now with the crease brush, you can kind of tell that we have another, it's a pretty subtle uh, divot or you know crevice in the lip, but that's pretty present on both sides. So I'm gonna cut it in pretty harsh and then Smooth it out. Okay. Yeah, we're starting to get somewhere. So that we're not really deviating that far yet. The, the lips I did deviate, but overall we're, we're still in a safe zone where it, it looks more like a realistic John Goodman. And so now that I do feel like I'm starting to notice his, his likeness, um, can you guys start to see that, sense that too? Um, hopefully you can where the sculpture starts to resemble him, but we want to push it further now. Don't forget to save. Are you the guy that always, the person that always tells me to save? Because the chat inevitably saves me, um, ironically, for saving. Because I never, once I start recording tutorials and especially live streams, I just never remember to save. So I'm going to do that because that's great advice. All right. Okay, cool. We got some resemblance. Excellent, I'm glad to hear that. Um, now let's start to push him further. Um, I'm especially going to, I'm gonna try bringing up the things we've talked about. So bring up the mouth a little bit, even closer to the, net, to the nose. Maybe bring the nose down. Because he does sort of have like, like a, a beak sort of shape at the end of his nose. So we can emphasize that more. But we might need some information on the profile. Let's zoom out and look at his profile. Okay. Yeah, I think we're on the right. We can overhang this a little bit. Maybe bring in the bridge of the nose a bit. Smooth that out. He has a, also this kind of crease. You can see where the, I don't know, there's just like a little divot right in here. Let's add that and see if it helps. Maybe I need to bring this shape out. I feel like the nose is sort of getting away from me a little bit. Hmm. Something is just not achieving the shape I want. Um, okay, so another thing, I, when I zoom really close in here, you can see how extreme the perspective gets. 
I, I re, that really bothers me when I'm working. So I think the the lens viewport uh, of 35 is too low. I like to make it 50 or 60, and that just makes it less extreme for when I get close. All right, so perhaps I'll use clay strips to build up a little bit around here. Yeah, I'm starting to see that in the in the reference image a little bit better. Clay strips or the inflate brush. Let's see. Bring this mass of flesh down a little bit. Yeah, okay. And then we've got this very distinct shadow on the side of the nose, which tells me that there's more of a indent so with my inflate brush holding control, I can push that in. There we go. Okay, we're definitely getting somewhere. Nice. Um, the lens setting, I've never called it that before. That makes sense. That's where your glasses, like the, these little guys on your glasses sit. That makes a lot of sense. See, that's the kind of anatomy I can get behind, like practical anatomy terminology. I'm sure there's a scientific name that's Latin, but I just don't, I don't get a kick out of learning that stuff. Um, but the lens setting I can get behind. All right, I need to, there's, there's very little geometry in the eye right now, so I need to work on up resing that, getting more details in there. Not any new techniques, just uh, being so close to it, I'm definitely adding more geometry, higher frequency polygons. But the same kind of thing where with the crease brush, you know, I create the crease, but then to push the masses of flesh together, we do that with the inflate brush and they just overhang very nicely. Same thing on the bottom side. Let me just push that out. Nice. I'm, fe I'm, yeah, I'm feeling that. I'm feeling it. It's feeling good, I think. Feeling it, bro. Okay, build up this flesh a little bit with my clay strips. Has anyone decided on what caricature they're definitely doing? What what uh, person, if you're or if you're doing yourself? I'm curious if there are ideas about this. Is anyone excited to do a caricature? Haven't you always wanted to to be one of those people at the? Ooh, look how bad that is. So always remember as you're sculpting to look at your your sculpt from different angles because when I come up top, this shape should be basically you know, round all the way, but it's got this really bad kink and uh, we need to get rid of that. <laughs> um, so I need to bring this shape out and just make it more consistent. But yeah, I never would have seen that if I didn't look from up above. So certainly get into the habit of looking at your sculpt from different angles. And at this point I'm getting in, I do feel like I'm getting more quiet. And partly that's because I guess I'm entering the zone, so to speak. I've, you know, I've been, I've been going back and forth between reference and sculpture that I'm just kind of in sync with it. I'm in harmony with it. It is how I would describe it to where I'm starting to, I don't know, just be, get into autopilot mode and go feature to feature. I've been doing the exact same approach this whole time. And so I get quiet, um, but just repeat the same thing over and over again. So uh, hopefully you guys get to that as well. You find that you do the same thing. Hmm. I 
think I wanted that to be a little more subtle. But the zone is a good place to be. It's, uh, yeah, it's where you're one with the sculpture. And uh, I, I also think it's, I feel like I'm hitting the likeness fairly well. And so that's in, like encouraging. So I feel good about what we're doing. Whereas if I was not hitting the likeness, I would not be in the zone and I would just be getting frustrating frustrated but you know hopefully you can kind of follow along with me um don't be don't see the ball be the ball uh but you can follow me as i look at the brow and you know see these creases and add them you know it's it's not more complex than that to be honest then he's got this vein which i never i didn't notice the first or the in the rehearsal yesterday but he's got this vein in his forehead, which is probably something I should add. Let's turn off symmetry. Does that even look like a vein? I don't think it really does. Okay, let's turn symmetry back on and add more cr uh, creases in the forehead. I'm also getting to the point where I think 10 is probably not the right value for my dynamic topology. I think I'm reaching the limits of that value. But I hesitate to jump right up and go to five because, it, you know, 10 is easier to work with. It's less of a commitment. But. Nice. Yeah, I like the way this is going. I mean, the chin to me is just such an easy shape to create. It's like, thank you, John, you, you made my life easier. Your genes made my life easier. Maybe put a little crease up here. Pretty typical in human anatomy. And I think I see just a hint of it. You should do Wayne Dixon. David, because if you don't find enough Wayne images online, you can just look up Quentin Tarantino, and that'll be a very similar head. <laughs> I wonder if he likes getting that, uh, that comparison. I need to ask him. By the way, he is starting to work on a new course that is pretty awesome. It's about acting in animation. So there's going to be very little actual Blender animation in it, but which I think is brilliant because he's a professional actor and acting and animation are so, acting and character animation are so hand in hand that he's going to do a class all about that. So it's so just starting to get, get working on that at the moment, but um, it's a secret. So don't like tell anybody. Um, but yeah, so that's coming and that's going to be exciting. Um, good old Wayne. We love working with Wayne. All right. I I want to start pushing some of these shapes a bit more. I want to start getting further into caricature land because right now it's like a it's like a non-committal caricature. So, I'm looking at the shapes that are very distinct and I'm going to emphasize them. So, pushing in the head a little bit smaller, a little bit tighter. And I do think his head's actually pretty tall, especially once we get the hair. So I was inclined to maybe bring that down, but I don't, I don't think I want to do that. Maybe even bring it up.
Yeah, okay, that's feeling more caricature. Andy Circus, he's a good one, man. He's a. Uh... Oh yeah, he's got a lot of features. Uh, Jason Statham, he's. I wouldn't have thought him actually, but since you bring him up, there's a really cool. It's not a caricature; it's a stylization. But um, I think he's in my collection. I think. Let's see. Let me look through real quick. Oh yeah, here he is. So yeah, he 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 popped up on Art Station and yeah, he actually could definitely be caricaturized. I mean, everybody could, I guess. But he's he's more of a handsome person that I would think is more generic, but he he has more features than I would have thought. So yeah, he's a good one. Whoops. Let's uh There we go. All right. Um well, so wow, we've gone this is we're four minutes away from two hours. I did not think it would take this long. Um, uh, we've still have 50 people here. So thank you guys for sticking around. Um, I'm going to wrap it up. I don't want to, I didn't, I don't want to take too much of your time, but I, I have essentially achieved what I wanted to with the demonstration. Um, you know, we've gotten to a point where I think he's recognizable. There's still work to be done, but like, I think he's recognizable enough. I don't think his, his, uh, I don't mean to be offensive, but the double chin is not quite pronounced enough. Uh, anyway, I think we've gotten to a point where hopefully you get the idea. The, the, the caricature chapter of the art of sculpting goes over the same kind of thing. So please watch that for a complete workflow on this and... Um, and yeah, for the homework, uh, I would, I'm would i excited to see caricatures start to roll in. Um, I will be present in the community forum, you know, all month long, especially Monday through Thursday. I'll be checking multiple times a day. That's going to be my most active. On the weekends, Friday through Sunday, I'll, I'll check in maybe a couple times a day. But um, um, yeah, I will see you then in the community forum. Thank you for being here. And uh, I'm looking very forward to this class with you guys. Um, let me just do take a few minutes at the end to, to look at some questions, see if I'm missing anything. Billy Crystal, he'd be a great one, a great caricature. Uh, definitely. Let me see. Uh, it's been good to watch your process. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate that. I actually had I actually questioned myself if Kent's helmet hair terminology is real, so I Googled it and got some funny results. <laughs> Um, I, yeah, I haven't, I haven't Googled helmet hair. I don't think let's do that for kicks. <laughs> oh yeah. I, I think I used it properly. Just, I, I think of helmet hair as giving the impression that it's not attached to the head. Like it's separate from the head. Um, but anyway, <laughs> that's really funny. Um, all right, so other questions. Uh, thanks. Uh, let's see, question. Just wondering if you prefer absolute or relative mouse mode for the tablet. If you know what that is, I have the option to choose between them. Absolute or relative. Oh, I think what that is, is it, I think absolute is the size of your tablet is directly translated to the size of your screen, of your display. And for me, it's up to your preference. Like for me, yeah, my, I've got two displays. So my, my tablet is split in half, which means it's, there, it's pretty fine. Like small movements are much bigger on screen. And I've gotten used to that, but it really is a preference thing. So um, test relative versus absolute and see what is most comfortable for you. Um, let's see, Matt Curtis, you were going to mention the decimate workflow for someone let's see decimate oh my goodness oh oh yeah 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 what was that decimate okay so i think what that was about okay yeah it was someone who had too many um polygons so right now i'm looking i actually am doing very good on polygons we're not to the geometry height yet but for example hope i don't crash blender let me save this and go to, I'm going to add a subdivision surface. And let's take it up to two levels of subdivision. 
Okay, that takes me to 983 face, or almost 2 million tr uh, triangles. I'm gonna apply that. Sorry, I keep burping. Um, I'm gonna apply that and so my computer handles this fairly well, but if yours is not and it's starting to chug, what I'll do is add a decimate modifier in object mode because sculpting can get, uh, well, let's test that real quick. Uh, object mode, sculpt mode. And if I enable dynamic topology, you'll see it hang for a little bit. I get the pinwheel, takes a few moments to actually register all that geometry. And then we'll see what my actual brush stroke does. It's actually taken longer than I expected. But I'm also live streaming. I am recording through OBS. And uh, might be too much to try and enable dynamic topology for this. Ooh, okay, there we go. Let's see what a, okay, yeah, it's chugging now in the, in the um, viewport. So if I try to do a brush stroke, you can see it's just not that workable. I could actually probably work with this, but it's 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 frustrating for sure. So let's undo that and leave object mode. I'm sorry, leave sculpt mode. After two hours of teaching, I start to get my terminology all mixed up in general sloppiness. We'll go to object mode and add, yeah, this is a great example for, for a slow scene. I'm sure that's thrilling to watch. Um, all right, add modifier, decimate modifier, and leave all the settings as is. Just take your ratio. I like to start at 0.1, and that's basically a percentage. So you can see my faces are at 1,967,000 faces. I change it to 0.1, I hit enter. It's gonna take my computer a little bit to calculate what that's doing, but the decimate modifier is really, really smart because it tries to and it successfully maintains your detail, like your creases, and it puts more geometry there. But where there's less detail, it, it takes away geometry. And so um, it's like an optimization for a triangular mesh. And, and it's not going to come out quads. It's going to come out, frankly, ugly and triangulated. But that's fine. That's what our sculpture uses anyway. And so once this finishes running, okay, now I'm at 196,000. And it literally doesn't look different. Like I can't tell a visual difference at all. And so I would apply that. And uh, again, for some reason it takes a little bit. But when I apply that, I'll just jump right into sculpt mode and continue working at a much lower um, uh, uh, polygon count. And so it's much faster. So um, what kind of, a question from Matt Curtis, what kind of Mac are you working on? I've got the 2013 Vader Pro is what I, the, the Mac Pro. Um, that looks like a canister, and it's been it's been actually a really good workhorse computer. I have had a couple kind of show stopping errors along the way, but the the Apple Store did did a good job fixing that. But um, I don't know, it's starting to show its age a little bit, but in general, it's still a very good machine. Um, but man, do I have a lot of peripherals attached to it, as as you can guess. Um, when's the next live feed? Broman candle. Uh, <laughs> you know, I I didn't think I would meet my match as far as bro names, like using bro, Brohamid, um, Brosif and all that stuff. But David's given me a run for my money. Um, could you show how to tilt a sculpt, please? Uh, let's see, questions are coming. Um, ever mistaken your Mac for a trash can? <laughs> Jokes. You guys are funny. Um, can you show how to, the, to tilt a sculpt? I'm not sure what you mean. Is um, can you is that is that what you were, were you the one asking earlier about rotating? Because I'm not I'm not exactly sure what tw what tilting the sculpt is. Um, do bears eat beets? Another office office reference. I love it. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Now we're just having fun. I like it. Okay, I think I've answered all the quote unquote serious questions. Um, is it all right to follow along in ZBrush? Yes, yeah, certainly. Someone else already asked that and it's fine. Software is, if you have ZBrush, the principles apply to any any software. Um, so yeah, go ahead and, and use ZBrush. Um, like his head is tilted in the photo. Oh, 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 got you. Yeah, so basically posing. 
what I would do, and I hope this isn't terribly slow, I would tab into edit mode. I mean, I don't know, it's kind of another topic. I'll definitely get to this when we talk, talk about posing, but if I wanted to tilt it in the, just right now when you ask, I would create a shape key first. So go to the object data, create two shape keys because the first one is the basis and the second one is the actual shape key. Uh, change that to a value of one with that shape key selected, tab into edit mode. I'm going to control and marquee select these verts right here. And then right click because I use left click select, right click to put my cursor kind of visually at the bottom of the neck. Enable proportional editing connected and then rotate. And yeah, that wasn't too bad. It wasn't too slow. Oh, but I'm not using the cursor. Change my pivot point to 3D cursor. I actually like sharp as the fall off and now rotate. Yeah, so that's kind of how I would go about it. And since it's a shape key, I can go back and forth, maintain the original and see the, the new version. Uh, but that's probably, I don't know if that's gonna be how I pose it in the, for the real character, but for this example. Awesome, okay, so that's gonna be it. I will for sure let you go now. We're over two hours and thank you for being here. I look very forward to this class and uh, I will see you in the community forums. All right, we will very much be in touch for the entire month. So um, goodbye, enjoy the rest of your Tuesday.